birth, death, two of the most important days of one's experience on earth, and everything in between these events is spent trying to rationalize and understand our time here. Are we just a small part of an enormous, mysterious puzzle containing an uncountable number of other pieces, all trying to complete a portrait of life? Or are we each a solitary puzzle, never-ending, unfinished, assembling our own pieces to find answers about who, what, and why we are, where we came from, and where we will end up? Many of us seek answers through truths, wisdom, and comfort. Sometimes, those answers come to us through actions and energies unknown. Usually, only opening a doorway to a universe of new questions on our path to enlightenment. This Wednesday started like every other Wednesday for the last three years. Clay leaving home, driving the same route each way to pick up his granddaughter for an overnight stay with him and his wife Joy. Little did he know that this particular trip on this particular day would open a door to a myriad of life-altering questions in search of answers that could only be found on the other side of that door. Papa, why'd you stop the car? He didn't get across the road, honey. I had to stop for it. particular day he just noticed this house and it drew him in it kind of attracted his attention and then every time he drove up and down this road he would notice this house and clay has a habit of seeing houses that he wonders i wonder what the history is of the house i wonder what's happened in the house in the past it just looks like an interesting house and he has a he has a habit of doing that. He has a habit of saying, I'd like to get in that house and just see how it feels. I'd like to get in that house and, and see what's going on with it. And so that was one of those houses. He would drive by it and just say, that house just seems interesting to me. That house is kind of drawing me in. I'm not sure what's going on with that. This week, I would say. Good. How about you? Not too bad. What's you doing? Uh, we just got an email from the website. Somebody looking for some help from us. What is it? The normal dust orbs or whatever? Well, I don't know. They said they've seen figures. They hear voices. Hmm. Hear sounds in the house. Where is it? 
She's not the owner. She's got to get back to us and let us know where it is. They want some confidentiality, so I told her we could handle that. No problem. Okay. Ready for dinner? Sure. Why not? Okay. Good. Okay. One day, I came home from work and Clay met me at the door and he said, you will never believe what just happened. And I said, what? Uh, unusual things were always happening, so I wasn't surprised when he said that. He said to me, remember that house I've been talking about for the past several months? Remember that house that I drive by all the time and every time I drive by it, I'm saying something about that house. And I said, yeah, I remember. He said, guess who I just got an email from. As Joy and I first entered the home, we could feel a rush go through us. Waiting for us, we soon learned, were the owners of the house and other family members we had not expected. Something seemed off. There seemed to be more a feeling of secrecy and anticipation rather than curiosity. At this point, I felt I was to be nothing more than an observer of what may come. of three little girls playing like happy energy um i don't think it's from a very recent time period there's energy is kind of comes in layers so this could be from a long time ago when the house was first built but it's it's happy energy nothing bad nothing nothing negative in this room i don't think in this room is kind of over in that corner. I'm feeling the energy of a fairly young girl, not a child, but a young girl. She's kind of hunched over in the corner. She's got her head down and she's either self-medicating or she's feeling a very intense emotion. So I, I think it's somebody from current time period. She's probably not dead. She's probably just living her life somewhere else but she left some emotions behind right over there so you know whatever she was feeling at the time that's what got stuck in the corner not her specifically right when we were going to buy the house we were doing a walkthrough and that's exactly what we saw there in the corner just like you described hunched over there I wasn't sure if it was a boy or a girl but yeah that was that's what we saw the exact same thing Let's move on to the next room. That's about all I feel here. I think there was a lot of sexual activity, maybe a lot of sleepovers. 
Um, just maybe not the same partner every night. Just a lot of um, just a lot of playtime in this room. <laughs> yeah, that that would be Ernie. This was Ernie's room. He uh, had a lot of extracurricular activities going on. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's it's very strong in this room. <laughs> so um, as far as anything else, not really. That's just the strongest energy I feel at this time. Joy, do you feel anything down here? First thing I feel is the energy of three men. I don't think from this time period, probably around the time that the house was built. And I don't think that they're, they're bad energy. I think that they had something to do with the building of the house or some sort of workers. I just feel their energy here. You don't feel anything negative or bad? Let's just see what else I get. I feel um, the other person that I'm getting is the energy of a, of a boy. He's about, not a young, young boy, but maybe 18 to 20. And he's more of this time period. So, but he's down here by himself. He doesn't feel dark or bad or anything. That energy doesn't either. Why is he down here? He's probably connected to one of you all. I don't think he's really connected. He might be connected with the house, but um, it might be somebody that you know, somebody connected to you guys as a family, or um, I don't think he's down here just because he's stuck down here. You know, spirits, they can move around just like we can, the living can. He's probably here to be with you guys. So in this room, I'm feeling the energy of, there's male energy, maybe 18 to uh, 22, 23, young, young male energy. I think that he, um, music, music was a really important part of his life. I'm hearing music, I'm, specifically drums, like that was his thing. I'm not sure if he played them or if he just um, liked the drumming part of the music. That's what I'm feeling in this room. Is he still here? Is he stuck? I don't think he's stuck. I feel like he crossed over, but I do, I do feel like he probably had some drug use. He probably self-medicated a bit, so, and that may have been, I do feel like he's on the other side, but I think that drug use might have had a part of his passing, so his consciousness hasn't quite gotten clear yet. It's really hard to connect with those who passed while they were medicated. Whether it's legal or illegal, you know, medication just alters a person's consciousness. So, um, yeah, it's a little hard to connect. I have a, a necklace of his. Do you think that would help? So is it somebody that... It, it was my son. This was my son, Logan's room. 
and uh, he was really into music and he took his own life here in this room. Oh, I'm so sorry. So that's why you really called me here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. So let me let me just sit with this and try to connect. Let's see what I can do. Yeah, I could. Yeah. Why don't you let me hold the necklace? Thank you. He's crossed over. He seems happy. Seems like he was a, a good person. Yeah, that's comforting to hear. Yeah. So let me see if I can get Logan. Having a little trouble, but the necklace will probably help. So I think the problem is he's probably feeling a little guilty. So it's, it's a little hard for him to come in. He doesn't need to feel guilty. I'm also sensing, though, on the other hand, that he had um, a really funny sense of humor. I hear him saying, I'm not at your beck and call. <laughs> that sounds like him. He's always trying to lighten the mood. So the next thing I, I feel like he's wanting to communicate is that he's very sorry to his dad for having to clean up. It was something that I felt I had to do to help me find closure. Mom, I miss him so much. I wish I could have done something. I should have seen it coming. Logan's saying, don't take this on. It's not on you, it's on him. He, um... He says the music took him down a dark path. Probably the um, the atmosphere, the the atmosphere of living a life that he was living, the drug use. It just started on a decline, a slippery slope that he could not find his way out of, and it it had nothing to do with you all. It, and he, he says again, this is all on him. He didn't see the end result of his actions. Um, I'm seeing a birthday cake. Is somebody's birthday coming up? His birthday is oh. coming up soon. Okay. <laughs> Ask him if he likes what I've done with the plagues. I finished all his projects. He said he was there with you the whole time. He likes it a lot. He's very appreciative. And he wants you all to eat a steak for him. Did he like steak? Yeah, yeah he did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what he wants. He he says he wants you to enjoy, um, celebrate his life. Don't cry over his death. He would rather for you to remember him in the good times. And if there was anything he could have done to change how things turned out, he would have. He just wants you to know that. energy's kind of fading away, but I think what he really wants you to know is just, just to move on and be happy and, and that he loves you all.
How was your day? Good. How about you? It's okay. A few things have been working on me, though. What's wrong, honey? I've been thinking about the family we just dealt with, you know, the house. Just trying to rationalize why we were there, how we got sent there, or what we called there. Uh, it just got me thinking differently about a lot of things. Well, you know, the one thing that bothers me is that even though I picked up on a lot of the incidentals in the house, the personalities of the people in the house and different goings-on that happened there, I completely missed the, the larger event, the reason that they called us there. Well, I've kind, of, I've kind of reconciled myself to that. I don't think we were there to tell them what happened. They knew what happened. I mean, we, we didn't have to tell them that. Uh, I think what it was, they needed some closure because they were going to sell the house due to the fact that the boy took his life there. And maybe they thought he was going to be stuck there and wanted to find that out. So I don't really, that's not really a problem. It just, uh, it's all the circumstances are, you know, around it as far as, you know, did they reach out to me? Did I reach out to them? It's just strange. Well, you know, we've always said that love is the energy that holds the universe together. And the boy's love for his family, the family's love for the boy, that's probably the cord that pulled you in. Yeah, it just seems like every time we try to come up with an answer, uh, we just end up delving into more questions. And the whole thing, just, it was just a very strange coincidence. Nothing is a coincidence. So many days is yet to come Many times has come to pass Too many moments put aside Getting out alive Getting out alive Writing letters in the sand Lost to ocean's gentle hand Sunrise.